Reggie, what did you think when Shug said, when he talked about the, the Tupac reels or the Dre reels or whatever, he says that um, security gave up the reels to Interscope without him knowing? <laughs> security. Security seemed to have a big, a big, a big role at Death Row, huh? <laughs> security. If security can do stuff like that, that security guy had a lot of role of responsibility that's supposed to be a nobody, huh? Let other people on YouTube tell it. He was just a A and R guy. I mean, an assistant, <laughs> a runner or whatever. But how oh, man, should sure. Well, number one, I think he and he kind of cleared it up, in my opinion, later in that conversation where he stated that uh, he started talking about more of the Tupac stuff, where he goes into a robbery or where Mr. Shakur allegedly supposed to came up there with guys and robbed it, which I'll explain later on in an episode later. But <sighs> Shug don't know because, you know, when you're in prison, Shug had other worries and stuff like that. All he did was want to know about, I'll be honest, at that point, how's the family doing? Uh, how much money did we get? <laughs> That's where his head was. It's hard to get him focused. I'm not saying he didn't approve the deal because on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, David Kidder came up there with a list of stuff to talk about that I sent questions to. And of course, Reggie or David Kidder or Michelle or nobody uh, would have allowed or, or let five years go by without knowing that we had a settlement agreement with the estate where the Tupac settlement lawsuit got dismissed <laughs> dismissed by both parties because death row sued and they also sued for a settlement of all back royalties and everything that was owed for three million dollars and to move forward from that point and then we had to turn the master reels over to interscope and let them be our escrow in the agreement where the we can test the, the reels of Tupac and the estate can touch the reels without our permission, which y'all going to find out some tricky shit later end up happening, but it wasn't no robbery. And even John can, can, can contest because John started working there and dealing with it a lot. Death Row still had all of their reels. When he's talking about, because he made it seem like all the reels was turned over to Jimmy. Um, for whatever reason, he making it seem like that. It wasn't. It was just songs that were Tupac on it. Now, he has a great argument or, or, or a point. The only thing after he and I had a conversation about that I heard him spoke on, and he 100% correct, and he did say this to me, was Reg. You shouldn't have turned or over songs that had OFTB and Tupac on it. You shouldn't have turned over songs that had Nate Dogg and Tupac on it. You shouldn't have had songs that had so-and-so on it. Because he said those were the favor for the favors where they were, Tupac was the side artist and not the main artist. He was correct right there. Where Rich, when I made the agreement, and, and in order to get that $3 million that we got, from Interscope Advance, because we got a $3 million advancement, and we also, and Afeni and them got a $3 million advancement. What y'all learned about Death Row and, and Interscope's relationship was Interscope fronted everything. <laughs> they paid for everything for us up front, but they got their money back before they cut an, uh, a royalty check or you know a leftover check. They did a, a count and balance sheets and said, they say, well, y'all spent this amount of money, and this is how much left over. This is what we made. So I say all that to say, we got a $3 million check from them up front to live off of. And they also, during that time, uh, advanced a Feeney, $3 million, to settle the, uh, the settlement uh, for Tupac back royalties. But as Suge always saying, and it's unfortunate that he doesn't explain this part better, every motherfucking thing 
that was paid out by him, I mean by Interscope, he was responsible for. It came off of the sales of albums that was put out with that name Death Row on the back. And so, yeah, Suge is putting a little extra on it when he's saying that all of the music was turned over to Interscope. That's unfactual. I can show y'all pictures, lists. I can show y'all stuff in the archives where everybody know Pacific Archives held all of our music. How was I able to do stuff with the Chronic, uh, the, the whole Hopper and all of that stuff? I tried with Doobie and the other songs, Dead Man Walking album, uh, the, the, the 2000, the uh, Doll Pound 2000 album. We wouldn't have been able to do stuff like that if we didn't still have them in our possession in the archives. So that's an outright lie. It ain't no salt and pepper on this one. Suge just lying, or he was mistaken. And I think he did kind of clear it up by explaining to us and going more in detail about the Tupac uh, songs, which were turned over to Interscope. And may have, I may have fucked up by uh, uh, giving songs that were, had side artists on it that wasn't just Tupac alone. Cause that's all she wanted to give up, was just songs that were just Tupac alone on the albums. I mean, on the songs. Did I answer your question, John? Yeah, but I can already tell what people are going to say in the comments. So I want to go back to you saying that Suge didn't really care about the Tupac Masters because he had other things on his mind that he was worried about how the family and all that was doing. Well, I ain't just the talking about the Tupac people Masters. Are say but, okay. In the comments is okay. The first thing, sorry, the first thing they're going to say is the biggest asset that Death Row had were the Tupac recordings. So there's. So you're telling me that Suge didn't care or ask what was going on with him? Well, to be honest, the, what Suge cared about was making sure that the paperwork and stuff was done and that the check that was promised was on his way. Meaning we sell all this, the lawsuit is out of the courts, and he got $3 million coming. That's because they were holding up the royalties from everything, the Machiavelli, the Christmas album, uh, everything that was you know due to him was being held up because everything was in limbo, and they wanted they were dismissing us, and that's when we got our our masters from them. After that, that's when after they distributed, I think the last album uh, was the Dog Father and um, the Lady of Rage albums and and the Machiavelli albums. We were done with them during that time period. And and only in business with them on Tupac stuff. And 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 so that's what happened. And that's where his head and his mind frame was, was, all right, everything's done. I got my masters. Let me take it over to priority, get a deal, help get Brian up here so we can get, you know, some distribution, some monthly income, which it went from 1.5 million to 300, 350 thousand a month, but he made that deal happen, and we were free and clear, and had all his masters, uh, which no artist, nobody was able to do back in the day. You know, that was one of Big Prince's big issues uh, that you know he wanted to do with, with, with Time Warner and Warner. And that's why he gave up his name and became a symbol for a while, or a symbol. So, yeah, that's what happened. And that's where Shug mind frame went from. All right, I ain't fucking with Interscope no more with this stuff. Let me go over to my boy Brian at Priority Records. And he made a deal happen with him. <laughs>